it's Lori again and welcome back to my kitchen. Hey, it's almost spring. I didn't think it was ever, ever, ever going to come to my state, but it is warming up. The snow has almost disappeared and we're looking at beautiful temperatures next week. Now, some of the things that I think about in the spring are, of course, the very first goodies that come out of the garden and, um, and are available in the grocery store also, you know, things like rhubarb and asparagus. You know, asparagus is so many of our favorite things to eat. I'm sure that there's lots of you that really like it too. Um, and I am talking about asparagus today. That's the recipe I'm going to be sharing. What I want to share with you today is how I do pickled asparagus. And I use a method called open kettle canning. Now, open kettle canning is a hot food item, a hot jar, a hot lid and a hot ring, okay? Open kettle canning can only be done with a very small list of certain things. One of them being pickles, which are high in vinegar or high acidity. Other things that you can open kettle can include jams and jellies, which are extremely high in sugar and a very safe high acid food. And another one that I know people um, have open kettle can for years, I choose not to, but a lot of people open kettle can their tomatoes. They cook the tomatoes and then they put the hot tomatoes into a hot jar and lid it up with a hot lid and a hot ring. There's a little bit of controversy about um, nowadays we have hybrid tomatoes and some of the breeds of tomatoes aren't as high in acidity as some of the old heirloom varieties. Um, and so it's always kind of questionable whether your variety of tomatoes is actually high enough in acid to safely open kettle can. But I'm not even going to address that today because I personally do steam bath um, all of my tomato products um, just because that's where my comfort level is. But so like I said, open kettle canning is just for a few certain items. You cannot do this with all food items, high acid or high sugar. Okay. So Pickled items are one of those things that are safe to open kettle can. And um, I'm going to just go through my recipe and my method for open kettle canning uh, my asparagus pickles today. Now I use this pickling brine for asparagus, for green beans, and for cucumbers. Um, asper especially in the cases of, as of asparagus and green beans. This is a wonderful recipe in my opinion because when you have just a few things starting to come on in your garden, you know, those first few green beans that need to be picked or those first few spears of asparagus that really isn't enough for like a huge meal or anything like that, but you maybe want to preserve it and you only have one jar's worth of product. This is the perfect recipe for that because the recipe is written as one quart jar serving, okay? So the brine, you can either make a single serving or you can double and quadruple, you know, make it as large as you want to. The brine is very, very simple. It's a 50-50 it's a mixture of vinegar and water. Now I use 5% uh, white vinegar. You don't have to use 7% pickling vinegar. I know that that does exist, but 5% vinegar is fine. So I use 5% white vinegar. And what the ratio is or the recipe is for one single quart jar of pickled items is one cup of white vinegar, one cup of water, one teaspoon of salt. Now your salt, use canning, kosher, or pink Himalayan, all right? Your table salt does have iodine and anti-caking agents in it, and it will cloud up your brine. Now it won't it won't harm your food. It just doesn't look as good in the jar, okay? So I do prefer either canning, kosher, or pink Himalayan salt. Um, one teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of sugar. Now that's for a single recipe, a single quart jar. I'm going to be doing multiple quart jars today, and so I'm just kind of estimating how much brine I'm going to need to um, you know, fill all of my jars of uh, asparagus today, but you can figure that out on your own. If you know that a single recipe should fill a single quart jar, then you know how to kind of estimate how much brine you need. So I'm going to, first of all, um, when you're open kettle canning, 
it is extremely important because you are not further heat processing your completed jar. You're not putting it in a hot water bath. You're not steam canning it. You're not pressure canning it. You're just hot food, hot jar, hot lid and done. Because you're not further processing it, it's extremely important to have a sanitized jar, okay? So wash your jars really good and then sanitize your jar either by boiling them in a pot of water for 10 minutes or like I'm going to do today, stick it in your oven and heat it to 220. Now, if you're going to do the oven method and also be careful if you've already got boiling water and you stick your jars in there, be careful about thermal shock or just heat it up together. Put your jars all in water and heat it up to boiling and boil for 10 minutes. That's usually the safest way to do it. What I'm doing with my oven method today is I have a cold oven, I have room temperature jars, and I just place my jars in, yep, you can see it, in a nine by 13 pan. I'm gonna put my cold jars into a cold oven, and then I'm gonna preheat the oven to 220 degrees. So I'm gonna get that started right away. And then we'll get on to the brine. Now, like I said, it's one cup vinegar, one cup water. I'm making four recipes today, so I'm gonna do it times four. So I have four cups of vinegar, four cups of water, and then it's one tablespoon of sugar per recipe and one teaspoon of salt. So I have four tablespoons of sugar and four teaspoons of salt. Now with your fine ground pink Himalayan, I do wanna mention that fine ground pink Himalayan, uh, a lot more granulars can fit into a measuring spoon than let's say your canning salt or your kosher, kosher, kosher salt. Sorry, I'm having a speech problem right now. Um, I think the dog distracted me. <laughs> anyway, um, fine, fine ground pink Himalayan, a lot more granulars can fit into a measuring spoon than those other types of salt. And so you may want to consider cutting down the amount of fine ground pink Himalayan if that's what you choose to use. I generally cut that in half and pink uh, Himalayan is the type that I just use in all of my canning. And so it's just become a habit to me when I see a salt measurement, when I'm using my fine ground pink Himalayan, I always cut the salt measurement in half um, just because it really is a very potent salt and a lot more granulars can fit into your spoon. So anyway, I've got my vinegar, my water, my salt, and my sugar in my pan, and I'm going to bring that to a boil. So I'm just gonna crank on my heat here. Now, the other thing that I'm doing is I have my lids and my rings in a pan of water and I want to get those heated up. Remember, we're heating up our jars because we want everything hot. So while my jars are heating, while my brine is coming to a boil, I also wanna heat my lids and my rings. So I'm just gonna get them started also. Now with your canning lids, you never want to boil your canning lids. Just get them good and hot, okay? Don't boil them, but get them good and hot. All right, well, all of those things are heating up and getting ready. I'm gonna um, finish preparing my asparagus and I'll show you how I do that. I'm gonna page down here onto my work surface. And you can see I already do, I've already done a little bit of prep work, but I wanna kind of show you how how specifically how I get my asparagus ready for pickling. Um, first of all, always choose when you're pickling asparagus, um, I prefer a wide mouth quart jar because the sides of the jar are straight and it really supports the entire spear of asparagus. And working with a wide mouth jar, it's a lot easier to get your stuff in and it's a lot easier to get out. But if you only have regular mouth jars, you can make this work with regular mouth too. I just really prefer the wide mouth for this particular project. Now what I do is I take my jar and I literally just set that on my cutting board. And what you're gonna do is you're going to pre-wash, of course, get all of your asparagus washed Allow your asparagus to come to room temperature because that also will help avoid thermal shock in your jars. So room temperature asparagus, freshly washed. And what I do is I just line up all of their little heads, just all at the same height. 
so that they'll look pretty in my jars. And then what I do is I measure it according to the jar. And I want the tops of those asparagus to be at about one half inch down from the rim of the jar. And then I cut it off where the bottom of the jar is, okay? And that's how I measure my asparagus so that it fits in there nice. So I've got that all bunched together and I'm just gonna take and cut my asparagus off right there and it's ready to go. I'll do one more here for you. Line up all those pretty little asparagus heads in a row. Get them all at the same height. And then measure according to your jar and cut. All right, those are ready to go now too. Okay, now these little wonderful ends of asparagus. Now, um, most of you probably know that asparagus can get kind of woody and tough, okay? And I don't know if everybody knows this trick, instead of just trying to guess where you still have good asparagus, this is the best way to do it. Asparagus, when it's tough, will not snap easy, okay? So you just go and you try to, try to um, work up your stock, and when it snaps easily, you know that you are to a tender piece of the asparagus. And what I do is I snap all the remaining tender pieces of asparagus off, and I put them in another canning jar because I am going to cover this with chicken broth and make a wonderful cream of asparagus soup base. But this is how I always check my asparagus. All right, there, it snapped right there. So I know this piece is good. And this was the tough end. Same thing here on this one. Oh, it snapped right away. So I know this part is all nice and tender asparagus and throw that tough woody end away. Well, that one snapped right away. I think I have that turned around. I do. This is the bad end. <clears throat> All right. So that is how you check and see if your asparagus is tender. And it should snap fairly easily if it's nice and tender and not woody and old. There's my breaking point. Put those two little ones in there. Oh, that one broke right away too. We get to use that whole stock. That one wasn't so bad. And you kind of get a feel for what you want in tender and freshness when you go to break these. There's my breaking point. There we go. All right, so I will just go ahead and finish breaking these apart. Kind of like snapping green beans, except you really have to check them to make sure you're not getting woody old tough ends. You know, like this is a really woody old tough end. So just work up. Up oh, there was a tender part. There we go. Now all of these really woody old ends, I'm just gonna take and throw to the chickens. They will enjoy that nice little treat. All right, so for now, I'm just going to wait until my uh, brine has come to a boil um, and until I know for sure that my, my jars in the oven have come up to 220 degrees. And once all of this is all ready and hot, then I'll come back and I'll show you how I pack my jars and put all sorts of goodies in there. So I'll be back in just a short while. All right, so my brine is to boil and my lids are nice and steamy hot. My jars are also hot. 
So we're just going to remove these from the oven. Now I will tell you absolutely that there is no way that you can get your jars completely filled um, before they cool off. That's going to happen. They're going to cool off, but you've made the effort to sanitize them and get them as clean and germ-free as you can. So do not worry if they cool off before you can get them packed. Now to each quart jar, I prefer to use dill, um, dill heads, and I've got a jar from last year and you can see I really prefer to use whole dill heads, but I don't have any left in my freezer. I've used them all up. And so today I'm just going to use dill seed. Now, if you're going to use dill heads, you can use one or two whole dill heads in each jar. If you're going to do seed, you can do one to two teaspoons of dill seed. And I prefer the dill seed over the dill weed, okay? Dill seed is my choice. So I'm going to put in one teaspoon, and instead of my fresh heads today, I'm going to put one teaspoon of dill seed in each jar. And then I'm going to put one clove of whole garlic per jar. And then I'm going to use one whole bay leaf per jar. Now this is where it gets really, really important. Oh, that's hot. To pack your jars super tight. The tighter you can fit your asparagus or your pickles or your green beans in here, the better. And the tighter you pack them, the more densely you pack them, the less brine you're going to go through also. So I just take handfuls of my asparagus that are just cut so nicely for, for the height of, jar, of the jar, and I start packing them in there. And I do kind of like to start on its side. Um, I will eventually tip it upright. <clears throat> but just pack your asparagus spears in there in handfuls to start as well as you can. Kind of rustle them around, press them down, and keep filling until you just can't get any more in there. Put that bunch over in the corner. Get another little bunch. I think that's too big of a bunch. We'll put a few of those back. See if we can fit another bunch in. Well, sure, they're all going to go every topsy turvy every way. Keep kind of pressing down as much as you can. Now you can take like a spoon handle if you want to and also get a spoon handle in there and kind of pack them down with that to make them behave so that you can add more. Like I said, you really want these jars full. You can turn it and press them down again. The fuller you can get that jar, the better. They're going to look better, they're going to stand upright, and you're not going to go through quite as much brine. And yeah, it does take some finagling. Just keep working away at it. That's why I said there is no way that you will ever be able to pack this jar and keep it hot. But this is also why I like to uh, make sure that my... Uh, Broccoli is at room temperature because then I'm not sticking cold broccoli into these jars. And plus, if you stick really cold broccoli into these jars and then you pour that hot brine in there, it's a recipe for thermal shock also. So it's just really important to work with just room temperature um, asparagus. I think I just said broccoli, didn't I? I meant asparagus. Make sure that it is at room temperature. See if I can stick a couple more little guys in there. All right. Then kind of press them down in there. Now you should be at about one half inch headspace, okay? 
And you can see I've got that just packed tight and full. Now this is the point in time that you are going to go ahead and fill your jar with hot brine. I'm going to tip you up and make sure that you can see exactly what I'm doing here. Got that jar packed as tightly as we can. And now we're going to add that uh, pickling brine that we made. Nice and hot and boiling. And just carefully pour in your pickling brine until you come to that same half inch head space or covering the top of your asparagus. If your asparagus was cut a little bit shorter than mine is, just make sure that all of your asparagus is underneath the pickling brine. And you can go as high as one half inch head space. You do not want to leave a whole lot of head space when you're open kettle canning. Um, the higher that you can get that head space, space, the better, but leave at least one half inch. Okay. All right. It looks like we are there, guys. All right. So now working as quickly as you can, I want you to take and just wipe the rim. There shouldn't be anything on it, but wipe the rim and then take one of those super hot lids and rings and pop that right on there and screw it on. Fingertip tight, maybe a little bit more than fingertip tight, not much, but ouch, everything's really hot. And you are done. Now you're just gonna set it aside and allow it to seal as it cools and you are just done. Okay, I'm going to do one more here. I've got my dill seed, my garlic clove, and my bay leaf in there. We're just going to pack our asparagus in. Actually, you know what I was going to do? If you want a little heat in these, you can add a jalapeno pepper or a few little red pepper flakes. So if you like a little bite to your pickle, go ahead and add one of those too. You know, like either a, a jalapeno or a couple of jalapeno slices, or like I just did, just a little sprinkle of red pepper flakes. That gives them a really nice bite if you like to turn the heat up a little bit. All right, so we'll get these packed in here. Got one that didn't want to go in there, so I'm going to throw them back in the pan and grab them the next time. I'm going to settle these down just a little bit. And use my spoon handle to kind of straighten them out down at the bottom. And pack some more in. Tap them down in there so that their little tops aren't sticking out.
see if I can't get a few more in here. That is looking lovely. All right, guys, I think that's about all I'm going to be able to fit in there. Look at how nice and tight that jar is packed. Absolutely beautiful. If you need to press some of those little heads down in there, that's fine. You press them down in. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get some more of that boiling hot brine and fill this jar up. to that one half inch space. One half inch head space. All right, now we'll just do a quick wipe on that jar and we'll get a hot lid and ring. Screw it on, fingertip tight and let it cool. Your pickles are done. All right, I'm gonna shut all this stuff off here and I'm going to grab that jar from last year and a can opener and I will be back in just one second. Right. Move this out of the way. Now, you all know me, I'm one of those people where I say, the proof is in the pudding, right? So um, these are last year's open kettled, open kettle canned pickled asparagus, okay? Can you see that? Pickled asparagus 522. I'm gonna open this jar and I want you guys to hear how wonderful and crunchy these are. Now these are literally right off my shelf. I haven't even put these in the refrigerator, okay? They're just at room temperature. All righty, and we'll fish out a couple little pieces of asparagus here. Pickled asparagus, guys, okay? Let's see if I'm on cam. Pickled asparagus, not even chilled. Do you hear that crunch? Oh. This is the beauty of open kettle canning, guys, especially with pickles. Listen to this crunch. Mmm. Absolutely fantastic. Mmm. Mm. I'll swallow here and then get back to the video. I have been canning pickles these this way for years and years and years. It's the only pickle method that I use always crunchy, always delicious. Like I said, this brine recipe and um, the dill, garlic, and bay leaf that you stick inside the jar, this is the recipe that I use for all of my stuff, my asparagus, my green beans, and my cucumbers. It's all the same recipe, and it's all the same method of open kettle canning. Hot sanitized jar, hot brine food, hot lid, and hot ring. It is absolutely amazing. And like I said, after you cap it, allow them to cool and they will seal. Now, if you do have problems with sealing, um, you can do a couple of things. You can either stick them in the, stick them in the refrigerator, the, the jars that don't seal, stick them in the refrigerator and allow them to be there for approximately six weeks. That's another thing I forgot to tell you when you're open kettle canning pickles, um, wait approximately six weeks before you eat them because that gives all of the flavors and the vinegar time to actually 
pickle your food item and penetrate the food item. So wait six, six weeks before consuming them um, for the best flavor. Um, if you have a jar that fails to seal, uh, you can stick it in the refrigerator and allow it to sit for those six weeks and then just eat it straight out of there. Or you can try to reseal it by just simply dumping the brine back out of the jar, heating it back to a boil, heating up that lid and that ring, and trying again. Um, but I really feel like processing any of your pickled items in a hot water bath or a steam canner, it just cooks them and it makes them soft. So um, sometimes I have had one that will not seal. And what I do is I just reheat that, that brine to boiling again. I just dump it right out of the jar into a pan. So all of the contents, you know, the juice, the juice contents just come out of the jar and it goes back right back into the same jar again. Um, so you're not losing any of your other flavorings, you know, your garlic and your bay leaf and all that good stuff. But try bringing it back to the, a, a boil and doing the process one more time and see if you can't get it to seal. Um, but if you have everything good and hot, you really shouldn't have any problems at all. I never have any problems with it except for just, you know, very, very occasionally I'll just have a lid that doesn't want to seal. Um, there too, you know, we're all kind of struggling with uh, cheap quality lids and so sometimes that is an issue also. But I swear by this method for pickles, they're wonderful, they're crunchy, they are tasty and I think you're going to love them too. Thank you for spending your time with me again today. God bless you all, and happy canning, everybody.